Hey guys, Don Martino here with a special message from Logitech. Do you guys like to create content? Well, these guys got what you need. We at Anorax believe in the brand of Logitech because they have helped us get started and they have helped us get out of a lot of different binds that we have been in. We're here to offer you some of the best deals Logitech has to offer, so please go down and click the links in the description below and that will be enough to get you started. Dark Phoenix is directed by Simon Kimberg and tells the story of Jean Grey who acquires some powers that she doesn't know how to control. And if this storyline sounds familiar, that's because it was attempted once before in a film entitled X-Men The Last Stand. And it wasn't done as well, so I was hoping to get some better execution on that storyline here. I would say overall, it does execute that story slightly better, although there was a lot about the film that still reminded me of X-Men The Last Stand. Whether they were trying to pay homage to that or not, it just didn't feel right because the fact is is that movie still didn't execute this storyline very well. So you would think that this film would try to separate itself from that as much as possible, and I don't think it really did try too hard. So the first 15 and 20 minutes of this film are pretty great. I think it's some of the strongest stuff visually we've seen in the X-Men franchise and emotionally that we've seen in the X-Men franchise. And I enjoyed it quite a bit, and I thought that this film was going to be pretty solid just based on that beginning. Unfortunately, the film is pretty wonky from that point on, and I'll get into that now. So first of all, this film is a big deal, not because it has such a great storyline behind it, but also because it's the final X-Men film in this franchise, and that's a huge deal, you would think. It should be a proper send-off, it should be a big finale, but it doesn't feel that way, and I'll get into that a little bit more here too. First, let's talk about Sophie Turner's performance in this film, because it's phenomenal. She does a fantastic job. I can't wait to see this girl do more. She is a star, a great actress. She is great in Game of Thrones and this, and this was something different for her to play, and I think she has a lot of range, and I think she could really command the screen very, very well, and I can't wait to see what else she does in the future just based on this film and Game of Thrones. She does a fantastic job, and she keeps this film afloat it's a lot of the reason this film is actually watchable. So as you may know, this film underwent a lot of production issues. It got pushed back numerous times, and now it's finally here. So the curiosity has set in, and I have gone to see it. Mostly because it's the last X-Men movie, but there is still curiosity to see how they salvage this thing. And honestly, from an editing standpoint, this film is very wonky. You can tell that there's a bunch of scenes that are missing. And I really didn't like that. It does feel like it was something that had to be salvaged by a movie studio. And it was really wonky. That's the best way to put it, honestly. And it was a very unsettling way to go about such a dark storyline. Because a lot of the things that happened didn't feel very earned. But it wasn't just the wonky editing that made this film suffer. Even some of the greater talents, such as Jennifer Lawrence and James McAvoy, who are fantastic actors didn't really seem to be into it this time around. I think that they were phoning it in, and that's just me being honest. Now, to their credit, they weren't given a great script. A lot of the dialogue was very flat, and they did what they could with it, probably. But you could just tell that they weren't as into their characters this time around, and that was a big letdown. Michael Fassbender, though, he still does pretty well with Magneto, so I was glad to see he was at least dedicated. He is one of my favorite parts about these films, so it was nice to see a full-fledged performance from him. I don't think anything compares to Sophie Turner's performance in this film, though. Let's talk about Jessica Chastain in this film. I don't know what she was doing with this character, but it was incredibly underdeveloped. The performance was very flat. I couldn't tell what she was going for with it, and this is how much I know about her character. I don't even know her name. That's a very underdeveloped character, and she's supposed to be a significant part. But the fact is, is that if you take her character and everything surrounding that character out of this film, it wouldn't have made a difference. You could have gone about it a different way. There's a scene also involving a major death, which isn't a spoiler, you should know this from the trailer, and there should be a lot of payoff when it comes to that, and a lot of emotion involved, and it didn't connect with me. I didn't feel the emotion for this character's death at all, 
And that's very unfortunate, especially when it was a character that we've spent a lot of time with throughout these films. The action in this film felt very cartoony to me as well. I didn't really like the way it was edited together. The effects were subpar, and that wasn't really good. I mean, even for an X-Men movie, they felt very cartoonish. And that just doesn't work, especially when we've seen movies such as Logan, where the action is top-notch, and you can see everything happening in these really nice wides. And man, they just really bombed when it came to the action here. Don't get me wrong, it's watchable action. There's some fun to be had within it, uh, but it's just not great. And we've seen much better from the X-Men. By the time this movie ends, I don't feel satisfied with this being the end of this franchise. And the fact that this film underwent reshoots and they still couldn't come up with the better finale is just... like, what? Sophie Turner's character, Jean Grey, and Ty Sheridan's character, Cyclops, are supposed to have romantic chemistry in this film, and I just don't see it with those two. Individually, they're okay actors. Well, Sophie Turner's a great actor. Ty Sheridan's kind of an okay actor. Either that or I'm just not used to him. But their romantic chemistry really doesn't work, and there's a scene that you're really supposed to feel that, and again, it's another thing that really fell flat. But even through dialogue that isn't really the best, and performances that feel a little bit phoned in, it still works. The story is still there, and it makes this movie watchable, and the fact that Sophie Turner does such a phenomenal job in this film also helps to make this film watchable. It's like an okay movie. It's passable. And throughout the majority of it, the stuff that I liked the most was definitely anything just involving the Dark Phoenix, and I think that there should have been a lot more focus on that instead of all the things surrounding that. And that made the story feel very convoluted most of the time. And the middle act of the film involved mostly the two best actors in the film, Sophie Turner and Michael Fassbender. And they have really good chemistry on screen, but I found the pacing of the middle act to be some of the worst. It was very slow. I found myself to be very bored right there in the middle act. It's really the opening act and the third act that make this movie mostly watchable. And it's not a train wreck, believe me. But there are a lot of problems with this movie, and I just can't ignore that. I still think that Sophie Turner plays Jean Grey better than Famke Jensen did in The Last Stand, so I'm going to hand her that. So in that respect, I do think that they tackled the Dark Phoenix character a little bit better. However, I still think it was too similar to The Last Stand all at the same time. This film as a Dark Phoenix story was... Okay, it was an improvement from the last time we saw it go down, but as a finale to the X-Men, it really doesn't work. I was very let down by this film. This film really leans toward it being passable, but it's really still kind of straight down the middle for me. I'm going to go ahead and give Dark Phoenix a C. Guys, thank you for tuning into this review of Dark Phoenix. I've been Don Martino once again. If you like this channel, if you want to continue to support it, please hit that subscribe button below, hit the like button below, leave some comments, share this with your friends. I appreciate that very, very much. I'll also be leaving my Twitter and Instagram in the description below, so be sure to follow me there as well. This has been a review of Dark Phoenix. I've been Don Martino, and I'll see you guys next time.